This is the polar vortex, a rotating mass of extremely cold air that has been accumulating in the stratosphere since August. It is poised to significantly impact the northern hemisphere this winter. Up until now, a strong wind current called the polar jet stream has been holding it back. However, the jet stream is losing strength, and indications point to further weakening in the upcoming months. This could lead to the collapse of the intensifying polar vortex, releasing a surge of icy air across the United States, Canada, Northern Europe, and Russia, a phenomenon unlike anything witnessed before. So what can we expect during this winter season? Let's find out. What is a polar vortex? The polar vortex is a low-pressure system that develops in the upper atmosphere above the troposphere, where the majority of weather phenomena occur. It comprises a sizable mass of extremely cold air that rotates counterclockwise around the North Pole and clockwise around the South Pole. These two vortices are encircled by strong jet streams which are fast-moving air bands that act as boundaries separating the frigid polar air from the comparatively warmer air in the middle latitudes. Climate experts are discussing the potential collapse of the polar vortex, but what exactly does that mean? It turns out it means that the large vortex over the North Pole can slow down and break down into smaller vortices and even change directions completely. Such changes can have severe consequences on global weather patterns, especially during winter, predominantly impacting Canada and the United States, with Europe and Siberia experiencing lesser effects. What prompts this phenomenon? Is it a novel occurrence, or has it happened in the past? Furthermore, if it has occurred before, how severe might the consequences be this time around? Let's explore answers to these burning questions. In order to understand why it collapses, it is necessary to look into how the polar vortex works in the first place. So, how can polar vortices exist, and why do they never stop? The straightforward answer to those questions is the difference in temperature. Keep in mind that because the Earth revolves on itself, the amount of sunlight it receives from the sun is not uniform, with the planet's equator constantly receiving more of it. The air in the atmosphere immediately above the equator warms up more than the air at the poles due to receiving more heat. This results in low pressure, whereas high pressure happens if the air cools. The Earth's thermodynamics are responsible for this. Because cold air takes up less space, when a mass of air cools, it can compact and occupy a smaller area. Because they occupy a smaller space, more air particles can be concentrated there, adding mass and raising the pressure there. On the other hand, hot air takes up more space, the particles separate, and there are less particles as a result, which lowers the pressure in that location. In conclusion, hot air creates low pressure while cold air causes high pressure. Now, how is all of this related to the polar vortex? Well, since the air at the equator will almost always have a lower pressure than the air at the poles, the cold air from the polar vortex will almost always seek to move towards the equator because there is more space there. At times, the air in high latitudes in the northern hemisphere break through the vortex and move out of its boundaries. But how can the icy air break out of the polar vortex? It is caused by something known as Rossby atmospheric waves. Rossby waves help transfer heat from the tropics toward the poles, and cold air toward the tropics in an attempt to return atmosphere to balance. At the same time, Earth's rotation causes the atmosphere to rotate to the right as it moves in the northern hemisphere and to the left in the southern hemisphere, and this is what is known as the Coriolis force. Rossby waves are heavily influenced by this Coriolis force. A fluid moving from the equator toward the North Pole will be diverted to the east, and a fluid moving toward the equator from the north will be diverted to the west. This is one of the reasons hurricanes occur and why hurricanes spin in different directions depending on whether they originate from the north or the south. The wind speeds within the polar vortex jet stream can reach an astonishing 250 miles per hour, surpassing the strength of a Category 5 hurricane by 60%. However, a shift is anticipated this winter, and the repercussions are expected to be quite severe. Before delving into the consequences of a collapsing polar vortex, 
Let's first explore the factors contributing to its collapse. The creation of polar jet streams is influenced by the temperature and pressure disparities between the equator and the poles, along with the Coriolis effect. These jet streams, in turn, confine the frigid winds of the polar vortices over the poles. If the polar vortex weakens or collapses, it could be attributed to an insufficiently robust jet stream unable to contain it. Why might this occur? A weakening jet stream suggests a decline in the forces responsible for generating jet streams. As mentioned earlier, the Coriolis force results from the Earth's rotational speed, which remains relatively constant. This speed doesn't change during a polar vortex collapse, and neither does the Coriolis force. Therefore, the weakening or collapse of the polar vortex may occur if the temperature difference between the poles and the equator reduces, leading to a weakened or more erratic circulation. This, in turn, can cause the wind patterns in the jet stream to become unpredictable, rather than maintaining a consistent circular path around the poles. The next question obviously has to be, has the polar vortex collapsed before? As it turns out, occurrences of polar vortex collapses are not particularly rare. They happen almost every few years with varying degrees of intensity. When these collapses transpire, they often result in historic blizzards and record-setting low temperatures across a broad spectrum. However, it's crucial to note that not every cold snap during winter can be attributed to the polar vortex, but some of the most severe blizzards in U.S. history have been associated with polar vortices. Notably, the Great Blizzard of 1899 ranks among the top 10 worst storms in U.S. history. While numerous other collapses have occurred, none are as significant as the one in December 2012 and January 2013, triggered by a sudden stratospheric warming event. This particular event resulted in a massive blizzard in the tri-state area and colder than average winter conditions in the UK. The 2012 and 2013 polar vortex collapse is what popularized polar vortices and made it big in the mainstream media. In the same year, the polar vortex reformed, strengthening, and subsequently breaking down again in early January 2014, contributing to another winter season with record-breaking extremes. Now we know what causes the polar vortex to break down and we know that it's happened quite frequently in the past. But what does the forecast look like for the foreseeable future? Polar vortices in the North Pole usually start forming in August and strengthen as winter arrives, reaching a peak strength in December when the stratospheric temperature is the lowest and the most dangerous. Weather reports from September 2023 confirms that a polar vortex was beginning to form over the North Pole and that was rapidly strengthening. No weather model can accurately predict how this vortex will evolve until next January, but it is forming and it's getting stronger as stratospheric temperatures continue to drop. The next question is, what is causing the sudden stratospheric warming events that in turn causes the polar vortex to collapse? The answer is El Niño. El Niño is a phenomenon that occurs when the surface waters of the eastern Pacific Ocean become unusually warm, affecting the weather patterns and climate in the region and beyond. El Niño events happen irregularly every few years, usually around Christmas time, and can last for several months. El Niño can have significant impact on the ocean currents, fisheries, agriculture, and biodiversity of the affected areas but it can also have far-reaching effect on the global climate because it sends out waves of unusually warm air toward the poles. These heat waves were the culprits behind some of the sudden stratospheric warming events we've seen. There is a strong correlation between the number of sudden stratospheric warming events over the North Pole and El Niño events. The stronger the El Niño event, the stronger the heat wave, and the stronger the stratospheric warming event. The stronger the stratospheric warming event, the more likely the polar vortex will collapse. On average, two out of three sudden stratospheric warming events lead to a disruption of the polar vortex. So, how strong will this year's El Niño be? We made an entire video about El Niño explaining why we thought this season's El Niño event is going to be particularly strong. If you haven't watched it yet, we highly recommend that you check it out after this video. 
We are currently experiencing a confirmed El Nino phase, which attained moderate strength in September. Presently, there is a 95% likelihood that it will escalate into a strong El Nino by December, reaching its peak in January and February. During this peak, there is a significant probability that it will generate intense heat waves towards the poles, triggering strong warming events in the stratosphere and disrupting both the jet stream and the polar vortex. On one hand, we observe a strengthening polar vortex, while on the other, a strengthening El Nino poses a potential disruption even to the most resilient polar vortex. It seems we may be on the brink of an imminent freezing catastrophe. Despite the imminent peril, there is a silver lining. The most severe consequences of a polar vortex collapse are short, marked by exceptionally cold blizzards and spells. The true danger lies in its potential to occur unexpectedly, leaving us with limited options for preparation. So be prepared with whatever you can do to be ready, just in case, because you never know what will happen. What are your thoughts on the polar vortex collapse? Leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.